Hello everyone. It's Katie from KDMread.com and um, welcome. Glad you guys are here. Hi Tara. Hope that you guys are having a good Friday. It's kind of a bittersweet Friday, isn't it? You know, it's Friday. We made it through a week. Us in the, at least in Michigan, um, it's the end of the first week of school for our students. So that's always good. But it's um, Patriot Day where we remember um, what happened at 9-11 14 years ago. And so I want to talk a little bit today about using our writing to remember. Um, you know, I have four children and I try to write their birthing story soon after they're born because you think you're always going to remember, but the reality is you don't. I mean, you remember some things, but when you write something right in that moment, um, hi Courtney, there's something really special about it. And so, um, I was teaching when on September 11th, all those years ago, and um, it was a crazy time, as I'm sure you all remember. And, you know, writing can help us cope. I know there's many times where it can be a celebration we want to remember, that we write something. It can be someone has passed away. It can be a difficult season in our life. But I know when I go back and read what I wrote in those moments, it helps me heal. And um, I'm just wondering today how many of you... I'm assuming, you know, you like to write if you're watching the We Write Periscope today. But even if you don't, you are welcome here. But anyway, I wonder how many of you have a special piece of writing that you've written. Um, maybe you could tell me what it was. Maybe, you know, the birth of a child or you got a new job or someone got married or you had a grandparent or close friend pass away. Maybe they were sick. Um, I want to read to you what I wrote the day after 9-11, 2001. And, you know, it's not perfect. All the um, wording isn't just right. But you know what? In that moment, I was just really raw and I was scared. And so I was revisiting my words today in our um, scrapbook. So I'm just going to um, bear with me. It's a little bit long, but not too bad. I'm going to read you that just to honor um, the lives that were lost and then just to remind us of the importance of writing to remember. So um, I wrote this. Uh, terrorists crashed two planes into the World Trade Center in New York City, another cl crash close to the Pentagon, and another in a field in Pennsylvania. It was shocking, scared, and devastating time in our country. I will, for never, I will never forget where I was. I was in a teacher's meeting at the high school I taught at, and someone came in and said the airplanes had crashed into the Twin Towers. One was a United Airlines plane, so I called my husband and my dad to talk and make sure it wasn't my aunt's plane. She flew for United for like 35 years or so. Below is my response and cry out to God in light of this terrible event, and it's called Elroy, the God who sees. Oh, before I start, yeah, that's good, Tara. She said this week for suicide for prevention week she wrote about a college friend Chewy and his suicide you know I had a friend that committed suicide as well and writing about it was really I think it was a healthy way to deal with it it was something I could revisit but it was really hard too you know there's so much emotions but I think you know if you read my post this past week about throwing um hey Mandy um throwing stones at dressers because you were angry you can catch that post at katiemreed.com you know, writing is a much more healthy way to deal with our anger or deal, deal with our grief. Um, so I'm going to read you this uh, piece I wrote in response to 9-11-2001. Elroy, the God who sees, in light of the events that have transpired, I now watch like a hawk and listen with my own antenna, on alert for significant discoveries, sifting through the, the repetition and trying to make pe the pieces fit, quickly jamming the disarrayed puzzle together in a forced jumble of homemade concreteness, simultaneously and confidently declaring and truly believing in the hope of the true primary service provider, our refuge and shield, God our Father, 
a nation humbled and rumbled, a people united turning to you at last. You alone are God, always in complete control. Authority, supreme leader, creator and judge, we turn to you, we look to you. We give you our fears and we trust in you. You are strong enough. You are unshakable, unmovable and constant. You will heal our land. You will comfort all who mourn. You'll bring peace and assurance as we acknowledge you as master and Lord. You, El Roy, see all. You, Jehovah Jireh, feel all. You, El Elyon, know all. Thank you that even though we as a nation, as a world, walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. For you, our God, are with us. Your rod and staff comfort us. Shepherd us, O Lord, we are as sheep to the slaughter. Find the lost, O relentless Redeemer and lover. Bring back those that have strayed, yours that are lost, yours that are hurt. O Lord, we know that you hear us and you will heal us. May we be affected by you, by your word and your work, by your power at work in us, around us and through us. You are a God who sees. You are here. We acknowledge you. We worship you. Have your way. May we be your vessels, leaning on the everlasting arms. Katie. And then below on the scrapbook page, I just said, a song that brought comfort and hope was um, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. Wonderful counselor, mighty God, prince of peace, name above every name to the captives brings release. Call on him while is, he's near. He will conquer every fear. Jesus, Jesus. So that was what I wrote um, about 9-11 all those years ago. And I hope it brings comfort to you today that even when things fall apart, even when it comes crashing down, God is El Roy, the God who sees. He's not surprised. He's able to pick up the pieces. As my friend Jen Han said, he is, you know, the God who can use the rubble for his glory. And I'm just, uh, let's pray for all those who have lost love, loved ones. Yes, hubby, we will never forget. Amen. Um, let's pray for all those that are grieving today as a nation, um, those who have lost people. You know, I think about Lisa Beamer today. I don't know if you read her book, um, Let's Roll, but her husband, Todd, you know, died on 9-11. And I was just kind of trying to look up. Um, oh, that's a good verse here. We be may come for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Psalm 35. Amen. Um, anyway, but her book, um, you know, is just um, just a great tribute to her husband, you know, and she can go back to that and um, remember the good and remember the hard. So I just encourage you, keep writing. Don't give up. Write to remember. Um, write in the moment when your heart is raw because it can provide comfort for you and for others as you go back um, and revisit those moments, revisit those anniversaries, revisit those days. So keep writing. You can do it. Um, if there's a loss in your life or something that's really great going on, take a moment today and write down how you're feeling about it. You know, we always think we'll have time. We always think that we'll remember later to do it, but make the time today to get down on paper your feelings, your thoughts, so that you can better remember and so can others. Thanks for joining me today for We Write. I'll be back here on Monday at 10 a.m. Eastern Time for encouragement with the Monday message. On Wednesday evenings after dinner, my husband and I do stop hammock time where we talk about marriage tips. And then I'll be back again next Friday to do We Write. Um, Tara says, writing is what has helped me live as a daughter of someone who daily struggles with a mental illness. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can see that, how that would help you cope. And you know the thing I love about writing is you have a captive audience. The paper is not interrupting you. It's not talking back to you. It's just letting you, it's giving you their attention. I mean, I realize a paper doesn't have a soul, but you know what I mean? It can just be a way to, you know, not be judged by what we're saying. So take out a pen, get out your keyboard today and write to remember. This is Katie M. Reed from katiemreed.com. I'll talk to you later.